Good morning, everyone. A return to the scene of the crime. You probably guessed from the title of the video, maybe, but this is the the lake. I think it's maybe called Hokiem Lake. I'm not sure. I forget the name. Maybe somebody will let us know in the comments. I, I, we just arrived in Hanoi. First day, second day technically, came down to the lake here and somebody stole Michelle's mobile phone out of her handbag. So it's a bit distressing, a bit of an upsetting um, start to our <laughs> return to Hanoi. What a shame, hey? So we were here, right here, and I'd say almost exactly at this spot. And the reason we know that is because we were at a, the bridge is just over here across the lake. You have to pay now to, to go across there. I didn't think you did before. But anyway, we were just in a, a little restaurant that we know on the other side of the lake. And at first we thought, well, maybe we left it. Maybe we didn't lose it. And I'll explain why that was never going to be the case. But maybe we didn't. So we, we ran back there. It's only maybe oh, a couple of hundred yards in this direction. And the guy luckily has like a security camera and he showed us the security camera and he showed Michelle putting the phone away. So we know it was in this, this stretch, basically along the lake side here. Take a little walk around while I explain to you what happened and why you have to be cautious. I'm not gonna blame this on Hanoi because you know, we've traveled to Hanoi many times before and all cities have their issues and we don't, we've been very lucky so far i'm not going to touch wood not that superstitious but we've been very lucky so far and it could have probably happened anywhere but it happened here in vietnam in hanoi some people will say yeah it would do there is a lot of sort of petty crime in the region and let me take a walk explain to you what happened so we arrived yesterday in hanoi and we went straight out to visit a few of our favorite haunts here in the city and particularly there's a dessert place on Totik Street which Michelle loves because it has coconut ice cream really nice coconut ice cream and um, so that was there a lot of the places have closed by the way they're no longer here so that was a bit of a shame but this place was still there we had ice cream it was delicious and then we came for a walk down to the lake the beginning of the lake is just here and we walked along this pathway this exact pathway up here and there was a lot of activity. There was a band playing, a double-decker bus there. So there was a band playing, a lot of noise, a lot of activity, a lot of opportunity for this sort of stuff to happen. And what I think happened was, let me just turn the camera to me again. I think what happened is this was a, maybe a two-phase sort of thing. Somebody must have rocked up and managed to unzip Michelle's bag. Now, we're normally very cautious, but we've just come from South Korea. In South Korea, you can leave your handbag on the side for a day and come back and it'll still be there. So maybe we were lulled into that sense of um, security. But anyway, I think somebody probably unzipped her bag and then had a second attempt and went and dipped in the bag and managed to find Michelle's mobile phone and stole it. We got just to this side and I said, oh, well, there's a phone shop. I must go and check out the Sims. And as I did, Michelle, noticed her bag was open and then she got you know what it's like when you've been like victimized like that she was she was notably kind of upset and we're getting a bit worried phone's gone it's a big thing when your phone goes because passwords banks everything has to be changed so yeah she, she said that and we we started pulling everything out we were in a shop by now in the phone shop and we started pulling everything out looking to see let me just walk i'm going to turn the camera i don't want to be facing me the whole time so she's going through double checking i'm double checking no the phone is not there and the bag is open and she knows it wasn't open so we went back to our our little um, restaurant a little ice cream store and the guy confirmed that she had it just over the road here so definitely the phone had gone we tried then we tried then to call it and it was already switched off the sim there was a sim in it uh, and another great loss because that sim we've had for so many years and it just it 
be impossible. Now, a lot of people say to us straight away, have you got insurance, you can claim on insurance. We haven't got insurance for these sort of things. Uh, they're very difficult to get insured and also to claim on. So it is lost. Nothing we can do about it. So, you know, <laughs> share your comments about that all you like, but no, it's not. So it is a bit of a, bit of a letdown for Michelle particularly. But the biggest problem is just resetting all the passwords as well and being very aware. They stole the phone, they switched it off immediately and then they'll take it to some sort of den or they'll hand it on to somebody and they may try to hack into the phone and start you know, accessing your accounts and things. So we had to get, um, we got back to our hotel rather than doing it on the street and we logged in and we had, it, took, it took a day and a half at least to really securely go through everything and, and make sure. Obviously the, the super important things were done almost immediately. So um, yeah, let's walk down a little bit more. It's, this is no reflection of Hanoi. Hanoi is a wonderful city. In any of these big bustling cities, this sort of stuff can happen. So let me explain to you how I think it came about. We were walking down this pathway here. We might have been on the inside, on the lake side. We might have been on this side. I can't quite remember. At night time, this is very pedestrianized. And actually, there's a lot of um, small bikes that you can rent or little motor cars, like toy motor cars, and they ride all around these roads. So we're walking down here. Just as I, somewhere around this area, it might have been a little earlier, might have been a little later, a guy stepped in front of us at speed and then slowed down like crazy. So imagine he just, he was walking up to get, as if he was trying to get round us, and then he almost went to a saunter that was so ridiculously slow that it, that we both remember it. And Michelle at the time, recalled that there were a lot of people around us. There were a lot of people around here anyway. And she, her, her instincts were to check her bag, but then they cleared very quickly. As quickly as they came, that they cleared. What I think happened is somebody probably made a first pass just to sort of knock in and un, un, undo the bag. And then this second move was probably to create a diversion to get inside. Now, they, they probably, we pride ourselves on, on this sort of crap not really happening to us, but they might not have got away with it if it had been on my bag. But, you know, we were back in a strange scenario. Now that sounds like I'm saying, <laughs> but Michelle didn't spot it. Anyway, she didn't spot it. Turn the camera around again, you have a little wander. So we're walking down here and somebody stepped in front of us quite obviously, well, didn't, wasn't obviously, it looked like just one of those idiots you get sometimes that sort of don't know what they're doing, but it may well have been part of the ruse. There was a band playing here, so there was a lot of noise. I mean, it was super noisy. As you might think it's noisy now, but it was actually crazy noisy. There was a lot of music going on. It was a bit of a, a festival. I think it's uh, the Vietnamese National Day coming up or, or just, just past. So there was a lot going on and consequently. Anyway, we're in Hanoi. We're not gonna uh, fret about it. Okay, Hoa Kim Lake one way. Ah. Okay. The name Ho Hoa Kim, the lake? Yeah, okay. Ho Kim? Yeah, Hoa Kim. Okay. Ho Kim Lake, no. Okay. No, no, this guy's... <laughs> uh, single cheap, half an hour. <laughs> not today, no, not today. Oh. I, I'm, I'm making a video today, okay, man. Okay, I want to black it one no, way. No, 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 okay. man. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking. How much is uh, one way? Uh, one way, I keep black, yeah. How much? Uh, 200,000 long. 200,000, yeah. one way around yeah. the lake. Maybe a cheap one out here. Yeah, I'm sure. 150. Another day. Thank you, man. Come on. You get a lot of that in Hanoi. Loads and loads of guys wanting to take you on their uh, rickshaws around the lake. But um, so we came up here, walked down this street, and by the time I think we just looped looped round here, and there's a phone shop just over there, and that's when we we noticed it. A little boy having his photograph.
Anyway, so eight years of traveling that hasn't happened to us so far. This lake, by the way, in the morning is amazing. You've got all the people exercising, jazzercise, all stuff going on. I love this area. But I would say to people, word of warning, they're still doing it. I knew there was a lot of pickpockets around the lakes in Hanoi and I kind of always keep my stuff very close to me, you know, odd pockets, not easy to access pockets and things, but it's still happening here. It is a major pain for us because it was a good phone. Michelle had only recently got it about, uh, about a year, less than a year. So it was a good phone. We're gonna to have to try and find a solution. I'm not sure what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna buy another, you know, thousand, two thousand dollar phone. So we'll have to come up with a solution. But uh, just to let you know, that was my story, share it with you. And Michelle didn't wanna come out today. She's sort of not feeling 100%. Um, and you can imagine, I suppose in a way it's a slight violation because you've, all your photographs are on there, all your private information is on there. Hopefully it's, lo I mean, it's locked and secure. Um, it's a Pixel XL, so it's a, it, the Pixels are pre fairly, it's not, a, not an iPhone, so Pixels are fairly good in that respect. Let me just turn around, we'll have a little walk, see if there's anything else I can think of. If you've got any questions, leave them, leave your comments. I think I've covered a lot of the things because people say to us as soon as we mentioned it, you know, oh, do you have insurance? No, we don't have insurance for such things. Um, oh, did you report it to the police? That's another big question that we get. Uh, huh. <laughs> the Hanoi Vietnamese police. Should I be so jaded about them? I spoke to a police officer here on the street and I talked to him pretty honestly and he was like, yeah, we, there's nothing we can do really, but you can go and report it to the police op office here. So we did talk to the police, but yeah, no, nothing's gonna come of that, I'm pretty sure. Um, so this stuff happens. There's a guy over there with a big camera and a um, some sort of local news crew. I'm not going to zoom into it because it's not that interesting. There are so many rickshaws. Look at all these people. There are hundreds of them. There must be 200,000 dong a, a pop. These guys are raking it in. Some of the best paid trades in Hanoi, it would seem. Look, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and as far as the eye can see. I didn't know they had a little drinking water fountain here. Hello. So they have a little drinking water fountain. We, we won't dwell on it, the phone thing. We won't, we won't dwell on it because life's too short to, to dwell on it. We're going to get on and enjoy ourselves. We just need to find a solution because Michelle's not massive on her phone. She's not like one of these people on it all the time, but she, does, she has got used to doing all the messaging and emails and talking to you guys on YouTube on her phone. So, so if she gets messages through, uh, both of us, we answer them, tend to do it on our phones now rather than on, on laptops. So... We do need to find a solution. Any suggestions? Most welcome. The video after this is going to be much more upbeat. I don't think this one's too up. I'm trying to keep this one fairly upbeat. So another, another guy wants us to go on his rickshaw. I think, look, they're asking 200,000. I think you can get under 100,000 and go around the lake. Um, I'm pretty sure but I'm, most tourists just pay what there are, so these guys are raking it in. Um, yeah, gonna end here. I might do a little walk through the city. I might pop that up straight after this so you can see Hanoi. You've seen my arrival here in Hanoi. That would be in the previous video. Uh, at that point, I hadn't had my hair cut and I hadn't, um, I hadn't had that, <laughs> that bad news. So that was the first day. This is technically the second day ish and uh, we're all good Korea thank you again for having us wonderful beautiful country super safe in Korea you know I think that wouldn't have happened in Korea 
absolutely certain of it. If, if Michelle had left her phone on a, on a cafe and walked away and come back the next day, that phone would have still been there. And maybe three months in Korea has kind of lulled us into that um, sense of security, but I've repeated that already. Love to you all. I might put a tiny little clip in now of walking through the streets, walking back towards the, the hotel so you can sort of see where we are. And if you want to see the whole version of that, like a whole walkthrough, I will post that maybe before or after. Um, I know some people don't like the walkthrough videos, but you, you'll let me know. Hanoi, man, love this place, absolutely rocks. Don't like the thieves, though. Bloody. <laughs>